Okay, so we know Kaniki can lose control at any time, go insane. That's actually one of his character traits now. He is very mentally unstable. But this chapter right here, man, Ishida, he either needs some therapy or some sort of award because this chapter was all over the place. Like, seriously, Kaniki looks like he should be in the next Godzilla movie. He is going berserk. I mean... I don't think any other Kagane, Kakuja, or whatever could top this. This kind of reminds me of that Nagas, the Nagas serpent thing that we saw in chapter 131 that was like slithering through the city or whatever. This looks exactly like that. You know, of course, you know, there's some differences or whatever. But maybe Kaneki will fight whatever the fuck that was. But as of right now, it is so, so, so fucked up. Kaneki is destroying the city. He's killing innocent people. I don't know if he actually knows what's going on, if he's, like, dreaming about some shit right now. But if he's knowledgeable about what he's doing when he wakes up out of this, if he even does, he is going to be so fucking disheartened. He's going to take a blow. Like, I mean, seriously, we know that he's supposed to be the voice of reason for, no, for the ghouls and for the humans to kind of join together or whatever. He's supposed to be the link, the kind of, you know, get them to get along, so to speak. Or at least for them to understand each other. And he's fucking slithering through streets, wrapping around fucking buildings, climbing up on like King Kong or some shit, killing innocent people. I cannot stress that enough. Killing innocent people. This has been, this, this is what Kaniki has been against the whole damn series by like killing innocent humans. He has even gone to the point where he just about refuses to eat human meat. So just the fact that he's just massacring everything and everyone in sight. Man, Furuta played this dude like a fucking fiddle. I'm not exactly sure what Furuta's end goal with all this. But this is obviously a part of his plan. And also, Kaniki... Calm down on the ghouls, man. You have too many RC cells. No one's cockajah should be that fucking big to be able to just slither through the streets. Like, they're going to have to bring in some nukes to take this dude out. The only glimmer of hope that I've seen in this chapter was the beginning when we saw Hide. Maybe if he sees Hide, it'll break through his, you know, insane psyche that he has going on right now. Maybe he'll calm down, but... With all of this, with, with him being stretched and all the RC cells forming this crazy ass dragon serpent cockajug thing, will he even be able to go back to a normal body after this? But as far as the actual chapter, how it was presented to us, it was done amazingly. Like there was no dialogue. We saw Hide and then we saw some random civilians. And I really love the shot. It, it was this guy. I don't know if it was a male or female. I, I forget. But someone was in a building and they saw Kaniki's Kakuja wrap around the building. And we saw like an eye looking in the window. Like that shit is crazy. Like, like seriously, I cannot get over how, in, how Kaniki is just demolishing shit right now. So here's a very, very quick theory because there's no confirmation of this. I just want to get this out because it crossed my mind. Back in chapter 131, I believe it was, when we saw this other like similar Nagas, whatever it was called, like slithering through the streets and destroying part of the city. Do you think that's the same thing? Do you think it's another ghoul, like maybe the original one-eyed king, he ate too many ghouls, and he has a cockajug kind of like Kaniki does. And but maybe he can control it. Wouldn't that be some shit if the end goal, if the end boss, the, the original one-eyed king had a cockajug like this and could control it? Fuck. That, that's that's crazy to think about. If Kaniki does go back to normal somehow after this, I don't think he can go into this form again without it causing major damage to his body. This is probably like maybe a, a two at most three time thing. Because I mean, this ha this has to be fucking hurting this dude. Like, at the very end, the last panel, with that eye, it, it looks like he's about to die. Like, if this wasn't, if, if Kaniki wasn't the main character, I'd say he'd die right fucking now after he came back from this rampage. If he even does break out of it anytime soon. Like, what's going to stop him? Does Fiduta have a plan? Is it going to be Hide? Is the military going to have to come in and bomb the shit out of him? Or will the other knock a serpent come out of nowhere and you know whip him into shape and show him how it's really done but as of right now he's there's no stopping this guy no other ghoul that i can think of 
can fuck with what's going on right now. They'll get demolished. Even the, the one-eyed owl in its full cockage of glory wouldn't stand a chance against what's going on right here. It would get smushed, eaten. I mean, Kaneki's Kakuja has so much going on right now. At this point, I don't even think it's a Kakuja anymore. I don't even know what the fuck to call it. Just a, a, a mass of RC cells. Just a, a whole bunch of Kakuja. Everything we've seen, the dragon, the centipede, everything fused together in this one big destructive tentacle, ba tentacles, basically. But the art in this chapter was amazing. Like, the, sh the shading... The, the illustration, Ishida showed his ass this chapter. I mean, damn. It was a really, really well done chapter. And I love how there was no dialogue. And we still know what the fuck is going on. Kaneki's demolishing shit. I, I never thought I'd see Kaneki being the one to just slaughter innocent people like that. And what if he kills Toker or some shit? I mean, come on. Like, one of the reasons he actually went this berserk is because he's like, well, I guess I won't be able to see Toker again. And he's, you know, thinking that he's a failure to protect all these people. Shit, he might be killing them right now and he wouldn't know it. Wouldn't that be some shit if after all this, he seems like a bloodied Toka or something laying on the ground or, you know, in some rubble or debris or something. Man, Kaniki... He, man, fuck. I don't know what Faluta's plan is. Either Faluta, Hide, or someone can knock some sense back into Kaniki. Because this, this does look pretty damn awesome. Like, like, I really love the scene when it, like, slithered up, like, that big-ass tower. It looked fucking amazing. He really looks like a serpent of some sort. It, it's really cool looking. But... We all know this isn't really Kaneki. This isn't what he wants to be. He doesn't want to slaughter and destroy, you know, just recklessly like this. So I hope he does snap back into it. Or at the very least, is able to control this power and make it like some sort of, you know, last resort trump card or something. But tell me what you guys think is going to happen next chapter. How is he going to snap back to this? Is he going to be able to go back to his normal, you know, human ghoul body? Am I tripping or does this remind you of that... That thing that we saw in chapter 131. But anyway, tell me what you guys think. This has been Jay with Like, comment, subscribe, and I'm out.